Hello again, Internet. Um, I know I've already done a video for you this week, um, but uh, I received an email from someone asking for some advice on purchasing their first bow, and I thought that's a really good topic, so I thought I'd, I'd sort of share it with, with everyone. Um, but uh, yeah, buying your first bow can be really, really daunting, especially if you don't quite know what you want. Um, first off, you need to decide whether you want to, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming at this from a traditional point of view. There is a bit of a crossover between sort of target archery, but this is all, all pretty much aimed at sort of traditional archers. But you've got to work out what sort of bow you want, whether that's going to be uh, a flat bow, an uh, English longbow, field recurve, you know, you know, you need to work out roughly what you want. Um, and then you need to sort of, you, you need to go into that shop and you need to try them. And now if an archery shop won't let you shoot the bows, don't bother with them. Go find an archery shop that will. Um, I've heard stories where there's been a couple of couple of places that only let you shoot three arrows out of a bow. You can't tell anything from shooting three arrows. Um, I came home stuck years ago when I was a kid. I was about 13, 14 years old. I went to a shop, uh, really excited, going to get my first sort of, uh, sort of high level bow. Um, and I picked up a bow. I wanted to increase the poundage. I think I was probably shooting... I was probably shooting about 32 pounds at the time, which, which is a decent weight for a, a recurve archer at the age of 13. Um, shooting this bow, uh, picked up this other bow, shot it, thought, wow, this is amazing. I shot maybe five, six arrows out of it, May, maybe even as much as 12. But it turns out this bow was a 36 pound uh, recurve, beautiful Martin bow, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, I shot this bow, but of course, shooting a few arrows, being excited, it was fine. Not until I got it back and started shooting it regularly, I realised it was too much. 32, 30, 38 pounds for a 13, 14 year old kid. It's, it's just it's too much, really. Um, but this guy was just interested in making a, you know, a quick sale. Luckily, that shop doesn't exist anymore, so everyone's aware. Um, but yeah, you, you want to make sure, first off, that the poundage you want is going to be right for you. Um, it's no good being overbowed. It's it's not going to do you any favours. It's there's an in, incredibly sort of macho vibe especially with the, the traditional guys that oh, you've got to shoot huge poundages you've got to really shoot the big poundages you really don't um, if um, from a hunting point I'm not a hunter but from a hunting point of view I believe 40 pounds is enough to kill anything in North America so I've been told um, not that I want to kill anything in North America but yeah 40 pounds is 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 a is an ample poundage you don't have to go for the big 50 60 pound bows not unless you don't want to. I mean, if, if you can cope with that, then fine. If you feel comfortable, do it. But uh, yeah, you want to keep, you want to get the right poundage. You want to start, start low and build up, really. I mean, my advice would be to get a lower poundage bow to start with. Build up your form, build up exactly what you're doing, and then move up to a, a higher poundage bow. Sounds simple, but so many people get overbowed so quickly, and they do themselves a, an injury or, you know, or it just, it's too much of a struggle for them, so they put that bow down and don't pick it up again. If you start with a smaller poundage, build up. You're going you're gonna to have a much better time with it. Um, now, a lot of places will do something called a limb exchange. Now, in order for, to, to take part in a limb exchange, you're going to be looking at more of the Olympic-style bow. You can still shoot that instinctively if you, if you want to, um, but it's a good idea, especially when you're starting off, because you can, you can buy a, a, a cheaper, lower-end bow with some limbs, shoot those when you're comfortable with them, take them back, exchange the limbs, get higher poundage limbs and keep going that way just to, be, just to get you used to shooting. That's a really good way of doing things. Um, I personally, I, I don't like the Olympic style recurves anymore. It, it's, if, it's, if it's not wood, I'm not interested. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so once, you, once you work out what poundage you're going for, try a few out, see what feels comfortable. Shoot more than three, shoot more than six, shoot more than 12 shoot as many arrows as they'll let you. Um, if the archery shop's, you know, a decent, honest shop, they'll let you, you know, they'll let you shoot plenty uh, and let you, you know, let you get a real feel for the bow. I took a friend the other day um, to an archery shop. He wasn't sure whether he wanted to go for recurve or flat bow. Um, he picked a flat bow in the end, but we was there all day shooting these bows. They kept bringing out different bows. Oh, have you tried this one? Oh, you want a flat bow? Oh, we'll try these two. And it was brilliant. And we narrowed it, na narrowed it down, picked the bow we wanted, and he's never been happier. So yeah, once you've once you've decided on what sort of bow you want and the poundage, you know your other options are your length. Um, if you're a big guy, you want to go for a big bow. If you're a little guy, you can get away with a smaller bow. Um, 
the, remember, the shorter the bow, the quicker it is, but the more critical it'll be. The bigger the bow, the slower, but the more forgiving. So if you're looking at a, a tiny 52 inch recurve, it's gonna be quick as anything, but you know, a little little bit of movement, it's gonna it's gonna throw the shot off and it's gonna take the toll on your fingers as well, because that angle that the string comes back on, it's gonna be really slight. So so you wanna watch that. Uh, obviously a bigger bow, the angle's gonna be be less, so it's gonna be more comfortable on your fingers. But um but yeah, there's I mean there's so many variables, but you you need to know what, what you want really. So you wanna your key, your key points are making sure the poundage is right for you. Uh, you don't want to go for too high a poundage. And to start off, I probably wouldn't go for too short a bow. If you're going for a recurve, minimum I'd probably go for is a 62 inch to start with. Obviously, if you're bigger, increase that. Um, but try them out. Go to an archery shop, try them out. I mean, there's millions and millions of bows on the internet, and it's great if you know what you want. Go for it. But if you don't know what you want, go to an archery shop, speak to one of the experts there, they know what they're talking about. They'll guide you in the right direction. Um, you know, there are there are some. I mean, depend depends where you are in the world. You know, there's loads of different shops. There's loads of different people. they will you know, I find especially with the traditional archery community, everyone's willing to sort of chip in and, and help. Um, if you if you go to a, an archery shop and the guy there is a traditional archer, he'll spend all day with you, sort of talking it through. Friendly bunch, I guarantee. But um, but yeah, I hope you found that useful. I've probably rambled on a bit, um, but yeah, that's me. Um, but yeah, I hope, I, hope that's, I hope that's useful. Remember, make sure you're not overbowed. Make sure the bow's not too short. Make sure it fits you, your hand comfortably. Try a few out. Just get to grips with the bow before you buy it. And um, yeah, get shooting. I hope, hope that's helped. Well, you take care of yourself, guys. Uh, I've rambled on for too long now. Uh, shoot straight, follow the blog, and uh, I'll, see you, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.